how you can count the number of variables for an open loop as well as closed loop process. Currently, we are discussing this uh, topic. Now, we started with this simple liquid tank uh, example. Uh, first one is input, uh, sorry, open loop process. And this one is closed loop process. And uh, I told the steps. First step is uh, to identify the control objective for a chemical process. Second step is to identify the control variable, manipulated variable pairs. And uh, third step is then to find the variables, different kinds of variables. <clears throat> OK, let us come to the next example. That is example two. This is a heating tank system. We have discussed before. You first uh, draw this uh, process, closed loop process. We'll start our discussion today with this heating tank uh, system example. And uh, first you draw this uh, system with its uh, control configurations. Deves is there, Deves Govind. Deves Govind. No response. Nidhi Raj. Yes, sir. Yeah. What are the control objectives for this process? To make T uh, to make uh, T is equals to uh, required temperature and height is equals to uh, required height. Why why two? Yes sir. Why two? Why not one? Why not one? Because if, mean, we, achieve, huh, if we will achieve uh, one objective, then uh, like we will get second objective uh, automatically. Uh, yes, sir, I think so. Is it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Rakesh. 10034, Rakesh. No response. J is the J. J Dutonde. Three triple zero eight. No response. Yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, why height uh, against height? We have selected capital F as manipulated variable. Is there any other alternate? Other than capital A, can we consider any other manipulated variable for liquid height? No answer. Uh, I, I think yes. no. Okay. Ayus is there. Ayus Surana. Ayus Surana. No. See, you have to answer up my questions because I mentioned already your 20 marks, uh, you know, that is somewhat allotted to this. You at least respond. 
okay so i think uh, all of you understood this concept uh, if we follow the sequential steps i mentioned before for this example system uh, control objectives here we have two control objectives one is to maintain the temperature at its desired level that is tsp another one is height equal to hsp so naturally our number of control objectives is more than one that's why this type of systems are called multi variable system remember this this is a multi variable system okay multi variable system and uh, this term is usually specific to open loop process now come to the second step that is to identify the control variable and manipulated variable pairs as i mentioned if you select uh, the control objective you just put those control variables here in the table so height and temperature these two are control variables and corresponding manipulated variables we have selected even before for this system one is outlet flow rate that is capital f which corresponds to h and another one is steam flow rate which is for temperature fine so here two control loops are there you see one is this temperature loop in the left side of the closed loop configuration and in the right side this is a level loop okay this is a level loop i repeat there are two control loops involved in this sitting tank system one we have drawn in the left hand side that is temperature loop and and second one is in the right hand side that is level loop therefore this is sometimes called multi input multi output system mimo m i m o okay you note down these two terms one is ciso siso that means single input single output another one is mimo multi input multi output these two terms are usually specific to closed loop system ciso single input single output memo multi input multi output system okay now let me ask you uh, what are the inputs and output variables charbhi jain 30032 can you give the answer hello yes can you hear me what are the inputs what are the output variables tell you know the answer or not sir i am thinking okay then sir the input variable is fi mm. and pi mm. and uh, the output variable is h what about other variables temperature yes, is left capital f is left fst left yes uh, fst and f and tsp no not tsp fst and mm -hmm. f are also the output variables because okay. they are uh helping in controlling output <coughs> output variable you were saying yes okay. <coughs> okay thank you pratik kumar 30013 pratik can you hear me pratik kumar no answer paulami paulami choudhary no answer yes jain 
Yes, sir. Tell what are the inputs? What are outputs? F I T I and F S T are input, and F and T are output. What about H? H H S P is H S P and T S P are input, and H and T are out. No, yes, you are not reading. We did not go through the notes. No clear cut concept. Aditya Jha. One double zero seven three. Yes, sir. Hello. Can you tell the Can you tell the inputs and outputs? Just yes, one sir. minute, Aditya. Just one minute. Ah, last one, sir. Back up. Yes. Yes, sir. Tell. So, F and FST are manipulated variables, so it would come under input variable. Correct. And the measured one are T and H, so it is under output variable, sir. Correct. What and about FITI? FITI would be load variable, so it is input variable. Correct. So, uh, I use no, you are. No, sir. Aditya Jha. Aditya Jha. Correct. Okay. Correct. So we got the correct answer from Aditya. I think you all agree. So these are the outputs and input variables for closed loop and open loop. They are shown separately. Fine. Now let us come to another example. <clears throat> Can I move? Let us move to the next example. That is jacketed CSTR. <clears throat> you draw this configuration first. It's open loop uh, CSTR. No control configurations are added with this CSTR example. So I hope uh, this process also we have discussed. I hope we have discussed this process before. And uh, you know in this CSTR example, exothermic reaction is going on. Now to take out that exothermic heat for maintaining the temperature at its desired level, we need to pass one coolant stream through the jacket. <clears throat> this I mentioned before. For maintaining the temperature in this CSTR example, we need to take out the exothermic heat. And for that, we are passing a coolant stream through the jacket side. So naturally, if there is endothermic reaction involved, we need to pass a heating medium through the jacket. OK. If an endothermic reaction is involved in a CSTR, in that case, we need to pass one heating medium through the jacket. 
<coughs> now here control objectives I already mentioned. Temperatures we need to maintain at its set point value. And height we need to maintain at its desired value. Now my question is why we have considered temperature instead of concentration? Tridipta Das, can you give the answer? Yes, sir. Uh, <coughs> Tell. The, the process is uh, A is being converted to B and thus uh, it, it is an exothermic process. So heat is being generated. So if amount of or the concentration of A is more, so more heat would be generated. Mm -hmm. Give the direct answer. Why not CA? Why temperature? So CA can also be considered or uh, T is more easy to measure. OK. Yeah, I got many answers. So I think you want to say that uh, temperature is directly correlated with concentration. Yes, At the sir. beginning you told no. If concentration increases, temperature increases. Some correlation is there. Agree? Yes, sir. Yeah. So correct. So basically either you need to consider concentration or temperature because they are correlated. There is no need to consider both. That's why you see in the table of control variable manipulated variable pair selection. I have written our first CV is T. Within bracket, I have written or CA. <coughs> now come to the point how temperature and concentration they are correlated. Any any uh, equation or any any definition? Saksam area. One double zero four three. Saksam. Can you hear me, Saksam? No. Anik Mandal, 10009. Anik. Anik Mandal, 10009. No answer. Rishabh Kumar. One double zero three six reserve. Can you hear me? Reserve. Anyone can give the answer. How temperature and concentration they are correlated? Any type of equation? Can you tell me? Anyone? It's actually a principle. Tell me the expression. So since it's an exothermic reaction, so if uh, temperature is uh, reduced, then the reaction will uh, proceed in the forward direction. See, so let me place the question. Arrhenius yeah, equation. Let me place a little different way, OK? See, okay. whenever you are going to control a process, no, you need the process model if you do not have the experimental setup. OK, I repeat. Whenever you are going to design a controller, you need either an experimental setup, real time setup. If you do not have that, you need one model of a CSTR and you can use that model as a real process. Got. Now this model needs to include some equation between concentration and temperature that I'm asking you directly tell. Like RNAS equation, you were saying that is K equal to K naught exponential T by RT. Where is CA? CA is not there. Sir, from, but from the rate of the reaction, we can easily get the concentrations of yes. the... Yes, yes. Tell me the rate of the reaction expression. Tell, like, you are in correct direction. Yes. Yes, sir. Like rate is equal to uh, K mm -hmm. into like component if there's A, B and C. Mm -hmm. Then A, A par X and B par Y. Concentration of A par X concentration of B per Y and concentration of B per uh, C per Z. Mm -hmm. Yes. So now you are saying is... in place of K, we can use the RNAS equation, no? Yes, sir. What about the rate? Any equation for rate? 
any term for a uh, rate. I Actually, so for different reactions, uh, we already have like what's the order of the reaction. So by that we can find the rate. See rate equal to DCA DT minus one by V DNA DT. Can I say this? Yes, sir. So basically DCA DT equal to KCA to the power N. Can I say this in a simple way? Now you just put in place of K, you use the Arrhenius equation. You see, in both sides, CA and temperature are there only. I repeat, minus RA equal to DCA DT equal to KCA to the power N. So we can write this DCA DT equal to KCA to the power N. Further, we can write DCA DT equal to, in place of K, you write Arrhenius equation, CA to the power N. So, naturally, they are correlated, concentration and temperature. Who gave the answer? Tell me roll number. 19CH30018. 30018. Oh. Sai. Agree? Yes, sir. Vardhan. Yeah, correct. Good. So these are the inputs and outputs you see. Sir, uh, excuse me, sir. In yes. the last class, uh, you asked us that why is the uh, uh, height of the outlet is uh, high, outlet is higher than the inlet. So uh, yes. I did not come up to that solution. Can you uh, explain us why is that? Anyone can give the answer? Actually, sir, I also searched a lot, but did not got any answer for that. Anyone else? Sir, because the product is being taken out from the bottom. What is the uh, correlation? I mean, how it affects the coolant so, rate? So we need the maximum uh, cooling effect in the bottom because B is being taken out from the bottom. Any better answer? Anyone? OK, so you know there are many reasons. I am just uh, giving you one initial hint. I think from there you can find many more answers. OK, so see this outlet uh, I am just considering at the bottom. OK. This outlet section. Exit uh, line we are just considering at the bottom. Can we maintain the liquid height in that case in the jacket? Is it possible? You got this point or not? I am I am just considering the exit line at the bottom of the jacket. In that case, can we maintain the liquid height inside the jacket? Is it possible to maintain? No, sir. Yes, so what effect it has? If we do not, if we cannot maintain the liquid height in the jacket. See, I am not saying it is completely draining out. It is not completely draining out. It's not like that, but we cannot maintain this height. So suppose your uh, reactor content is set till this point or maybe this point. So the upper portion is not coming to the contact with this cooling medium. In that case, we will face the difficulty to maintain the temperature. Definitely we cannot maintain also consistency because this liquid height in the jacket may oscillate. So one simple answer is mainly to maintain the liquid height inside the jacket. We need to consider the exit line as shown here. So usually the liquid contained in the reactor is still this point. Is this fine answer? But sir, in that case, the coolant inlet, uh, if the coolant inlet is on the top and the outlet is in the bottom, then uh, even then the height problem is solved. Right? No, so. it's not possible. See, you can get a better height, but you cannot maintain as per your wish, no? 
see controller we are i mean we are reading this controller mainly to to make the technology fine otherwise there is no need to use this controller so we are making the technology advanced means all the loopholes you have to take care of all these loopholes sir i did not understand why specifically the inlet should be at the bottom and the outlet should be at the top like why yeah. not reverse why not reverse reverse like the inlet at the top and outlet at the bottom see one x one answer i have given we cannot put here at the top okay because we cannot maintain the level fine so mm -hmm. if you agree with this you can say that we can put the coolant here also you cannot uh, consider or design this exit line at the bottom section straightforward answer is you cannot maintain the liquid height but if you put here you can maintain the liquid height without employing any controller for level now you reframe your question and ask me if you have anything um no sir it's okay i understood now uh, yeah if you agree with this you have to agree with this no if you are not understanding you think about this the level has certain importance okay because we want to make the technology advanced so you cannot say that i i if i put here and a certain height we can maintain not certain we want to ensure this all the times that the height of jacket uh, liquid is maintained till this point because my reactor liquid is still this point okay although there is no physical mixing but there are certain you know better heat transfer we can ensure by this way so many more other answers are also there you try to find this is only one answer i told okay yeah let us come to i think uh, uh, one important process that is distillation column let me make it a little smaller yeah did you read this uh, distillation column in your mass transfer course not yet sir. not yet Uh, absorption and stripping i think you have started no yes or no absorption and stripping no sir we have uh, just started the entire course only so, one class this is master transfer 1 or 2 first class was a purely introduction about no, uh, mass distribution and all sir one sir one oh this is one then it's difficult to understand anyway let me try okay because at the end if i do not cover this now you will see that where is the control of distillation column this is so important process at least you note down few things i think when you will cover mass transfer 2 you can understand this but uh, through slides i don't know how you, I, i can convince you anyway let me try first to draw it draw the schematic first
can I start? OK, let me start this distillation column. You know, this distillation is the heart of uh, refinery industry. I think you know we are basically uh, processing the crude oil to different products, starting from fuel oil, then LPG, petrol, diesel, aviation turbine fuel, kerosene. So from crude oil to all these products from crude oil we can get all these products by mostly using of this distillation column there are few other units involved definitely like pump compressor heater all these are involved but distillation is the heart of refinery industry and to show it influence i'm just a uh, uh, giving you one important information that in the United States, 10% of the total energy consumption is attributed to distillation alone. Distillation column shares 10% of the total industrial energy consumption in the United States. I think you are understanding the importance of this distillation. OK, it is a mass transfer unit separation unit, but here all chemical. Operations all means majority of the chemical operations take place like mass transfer, heat transfer, reaction. All these take place in this distillation. OK. Now you carefully listen. This is basically the distillation tower. This one. This is a cylindrical tower. OK, now this cylindrical tower is equipped with trays. This is a tray. There are many trays. I have shown only the three trays you see. OK, and this tray has certain liquid height. So liquid is usually accumulated over the tray and vapor goes through that tray. By that way, liquid and vapor they come contact to each other and mass transfer takes place. Few components of the vapor stream transfer to accumulated liquid and few components transfer from liquid to vapor stream over a tray by this way mass transfer takes place. OK, but this is basically driven by heat transfer. I mean, if if it happens, no, there is certain heat uh, consumption as well as you know generation take place over a tray. Now how we start? This is a feed stream. Feed means suppose this is a composition of two components A and B. So in that sense, I can tell that this feed is a binary mixture. I repeat, this feed is basically a combination of two, three, four, five like that components. Let us consider a binary mixture. Binary means only two components are present in the feed. And flow rate we are considering by F and Z is the composition. 
So this liquid feed, if we introduce over a tray, what will happen? This liquid will move down because of gravity. Okay, if we introduce the feed over a tray, this liquid will first move down and it will start accumulation in a reboiler. This reboiler is nothing but a heat exchanger. Okay, here heating operation takes place. And another heat exchanger is at the top, you see, that is condenser, where condensation takes place. Fine. So this liquid is coming to the reboiler and it gets accumulated over this reboiler. Although I have shown here a little, uh, this reboiler, a small size, but originally it is a large, it is a big heat exchanger. Anyway, come back. So liquid is coming to this reboiler and this liquid starts accumulating in this reboiler. Now, when this liquid level reaches certain level, liquid level, we start introducing steam. I repeat, this liquid is coming to the reboiler. The liquid height is gradually increasing. When this height reaches a desired level, you can say that is the set point. We start introducing steam in the reboiler. If we introduce steam, what happens? The liquid will evaporate. So the vapor is generated in the reboiler and that vapor we are calling as boil up vapor. This vapor which is generated in the reboiler that we are calling as boil up vapor. And that vapor is recycled back below the bottommost tray. You see it is shown clearly. This vapor is introduced below the bottommost tray. Okay. Now initially when you are going to start this distillation column, everything is at atmospheric temperature. But the vapor which we have produced in the reboiler and introduced below the bottommost tray, its temperature is higher than atmospheric temperature. The temperature of the boiler vapor is higher than the atmospheric temperature. So what will happen? This vapor is going up, but this entire column is at atmospheric temperature. So some condensation of vapor takes place. And by this way, the temperature of the tower increases and vapor condenses. Okay, but if we continuously introduce the steam, this vapor will go up go up, go up, increasing the temperature of the tower and at the after a certain period of time, this vapor will come out at the top. This vapor is called top vapor or overhead vapor. Okay, this overhead vapor comes out at the top and it goes to the condenser. It goes to the condenser. Then we start the condensation process. So here we have vapor, overhead vapor. Here we have complete liquid. I mean complete condensation we are considering here. Sometimes partial condensation also considers. Okay, that uh, I think will be discussed in your mass transfer course. So this is overhead vapor. This is liquid. accumulating in this tank then like the reboilers the liquid height gradually increases and it reaches a certain level as soon as the liquid height is achieved at its desired level we start withdrawal here you see the accumulated liquid in the reflux drum is withdrawn and recycled back above the topmost tray a fraction of this accumulated liquid in the reflux drum is recycled back above the topmost tray 
and another fraction is withdrawn here. I forgot to tell same thing is followed at the bottom. OK, steam is introduced. We produce vapor and recycle back below the bottom most ray. Another fraction is withdrawn. Same thing is followed here. That among this accumulated liquid, I mean a fraction of this accumulated liquid is recycled back above the topmost ray. And another fraction is withdrawn as top product or distillate. So at the top we are getting distillate or it is also called top product. And at the bottom we are getting bottoms or bottom product. Fine. Although it is discussed in your mass transfer course, I don't know whether you understand this or not, but if you have any question, you can ask me. Students, if you have any question, any doubt, let me know. Sir, what does XD denotes and uh, XD? Yeah. You see, these are the nomenclatures. X is a liquid mole fraction. Y is vapor mole fraction and Z is feed mole fraction. X is liquid, X is for liquid, Y is for vapor and Z is for feed. And they all are mole fraction. You know, sometimes this feed is subcool liquid. You can note down this, it will be discussed in your mass transfer course. This feed is sometimes subcool liquid, sometimes saturated liquid, sometimes liquid vapor mixture, sometimes saturated vapor, sometimes superheated vapor. I think five terms I told. Subcool liquid, saturated liquid, liquid and vapor mixture maybe 20 percent liquid 80 percent vapor something like that saturated vapor superheated vapor so that's why we have considered a different notation for feed composition we don't know it depends on what feed you are considering fine otherwise you can consider either x or y in fact that is also followed in the book if it is liquid, you can consider X suffix capital F. If it is paper, you can consider Y suffix capital F. And these are all flow rates. Usually there are they are molar flow rate, like mole per minute or something like that. Any other question from distillation? No question, okay. And you give this uh, title, Feedback Controller. Okay, I have already shown here this controller. Mm, basically, you know, uh, this you note down. Our control objective, you know, for most of the chemical processes, our control objective is to maintain the purity. Most of the cases. Like for the CSTR, even I have shown temperature, but sometimes we can consider also concentration. Concentration means it is somehow, uh, you know, purity. So all the separation processes for them, we consider purity as our control objective. I mean, Purity equal to desired value of this purity. So for this distillation column, like I have given one example, we want to maintain 99% purity of the top product. OK, top product. I have shown here the control configuration only for top product. For bottom product, I did not show. So you you uh, do this part. So this is our control objective. I repeat, I have considered only for the top product, but originally it is true for bottom product as well. In that line, I have shown here this control variable, manipulated variable pairs. Fine. 
OK. So control variables are one is top product mold fraction or composition X suffix D. Corresponding manipulated variable is reflux rate. Similarly, another one is XB, bottom product composition, and manipulated variable is VB. Now let me tell a little bit about this control variable manipulated variable pair. See, you know, uh, 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 can anyone tell from this discussion? Suppose I want to maintain, I want to increase this top product composition. So what we should do? I should increase R or decrease R? Anyone? Although I'm not expecting the answer, but uh, if if uh, increase R, increase R. Right, right. What's your roll number? Three double zero twenty one. Good. Say so, anyone can give the answer why? Why it is so? The more reflux that we keep uh, recycling, the more pure it becomes because there is more separation between the bottom and the top product. Yeah, uh, I mean, we can say like this way. If we if we uh, recycle more amount of R without withdrawing that, that means we are basically allowing this reflux rate to participate in separation in the tower for a longer time. Agree? Instead of withdrawing that accumulated liquid, if I recycle repeatedly or with increased amount, that means we are allowing this accumulated liquid to participate in the tower for a longer time. Straightforward way, more residence time. More residence time means there is a scope of having more purity product. So you are understanding physically that XD and R, they are directly correlated. Fine. XD and R, they are directly correlated. And, and in fact, you will see in your mass transfer course, it will be discussed in more detail. But physically, you are understanding. So that is the reason to select XD versus R. In a similar fashion, we have considered XB versus VB. OK, they are also directly correlated. Now, I have shown only, as I told, only for this configuration, XD, R. You see the control configuration I have shown for XD and R. So XD means composition. That's why we have employed here one composition transmitter, CT. You note know, down this, uh, uh, I mean, what CT means, composition transmitter. In different books, it is followed, like pressure transmitter, PT, temperature transmitter, TT. Instead of sensor, it is written like this way. Fine. So if we want to maintain XD, first we need to measure this composition. That's why it is written composition transmitter. Then as usual, it is compared with its set point value in the comparator. This is plus sign, this is negative sign. We are getting error. This error signal is going to composition controller CC. Like CT, CC, like TT, TC. Temperature transmitter, temperature controller. Pressure transmitter, pressure controller, PC. Fine. So CC is there. Then the CC or control block calculates the control action and it is physically implemented through this control valve. I mean, we can adjust, we can manipulate this reflux rate by this way. You remember here one thing, here in the reflux drum, the mole fraction of the liquid is XD, and it is same with the top product and reflux rate. Note down this point. The composition of the liquid in the reflux drum is X suffix D, and it is same with the composition of distillate and reflux rate. So all three have same composition. Agree? Any question? If not, I think you can draw the control configuration for XB as well. 
XB versus BB, you can also draw this configuration. If you have any question, you can ask me. Otherwise, we'll uh, finish here because we do not have more time. And you remember this is feed forward controller. In the next class, we'll discuss feed. Uh, this is feedback controller, FBC. In the next class, we'll discuss feed forward controller. I repeat. What we have discussed for this distillation column, this is feedback controller, FBC. In the next class, we'll discuss feed forward controller. OK, and we'll try to understand the difference between these two. Although we'll discuss in details what is feed forward feedback later. OK, thank you then.